Hey guys, I'm Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com and today I want to show you my favorite lens, the 70-200. to Many people might consider this a sports lens, but I want to show you why I love it for shooting portraits. So what I have here is the new Tamron 70-200 2.8 VC G2 lens. And I actually reviewed this lens against three other 70 to 200 lenses. And I found that this was one of my favorite ones. It's great for the price and it has the absolute best VR. You can check out that video in the description below. But today I'm gonna use this to show you how you guys can control the backgrounds of your portraits. So as you can see, I'm actually here on a really pretty street in Charleston, but there's a lot of distracting elements. If I had to shoot here with a 24 to 70, I would really be forced to probably include a lot of these elements in the photographs, and I simply don't want to do that. So to illustrate how you can use a 70 to 200 to really control your backgrounds, I have my friend Kirsten here who's going to help model for us. You ready to do this? So ready. Let's go. Let's start with something like a 35 millimeter. Now this is great if you're doing landscapes or photojournalism or you know something like that, maybe weddings, but it's not necessarily your go-to lens for a portrait. I'm going to show you why. I have uh, this set at 1.8, which is actually going to blur the background a little more, which you might think would be really useful. But if I take this picture of Kirsten here. So the problem with this photograph is that, yes, we have a really blurry background, which is typically more pleasing, but you're seeing a lot of distracting elements. We have the fire hydrant here in the background, and because I'm shooting so much of the scene, there's really a lot of differences in exposure. We have some, high, uh, some blown out highlights right here. We have extreme blown out highlights in the back, but then we also have areas of shade kind of up towards the front. So I'm not really able to control the actual exposure and background as well as I would like to. Now, most people aren't gonna pick up a 35 millimeter lens to shoot a portrait. They would probably use a 24 to 70. So let's see what this would look like on the far end of that, the 70 millimeter range, and see if that solves the problems that we have here with a 35 millimeter. So instead of putting a 24 to 70 on my camera, I have the 70 to 200 lens here, and I have this zoomed all the way out to 70 millimeters. So in order to get the same composition, I'm right on top of it right here, I'm gonna have to take a few steps back. And let me get a similar composition. You can still see that fire hydrant, but it's actually brought up even more close to the foreground, and you could remove this in Photoshop, but I think we can actually make this look better simply by keeping the fire hydrant out of the photo altogether. So in order to create a more pleasing background, I'm actually gonna zoom all the way to 200 millimeters. Of course, I'm gonna have to walk further back to get the same composition. But let's see what this photo looks like at 200. So if we look at this photograph here at 200 millimeters, you can see I mean, I've almost completely eliminated the sky. I was able to shoot through so many branches that the sky that does show up is almost a gray color. We have a lot of separation around her shirt. We've completely gotten rid of the fire hydrant and everything's kind of got this abstract view. You can't even tell that we're really on the street. So there's really no right or wrong approach here when choosing your millimeter. You might like the look of the 35. You might love the look of the 70. If you had an 85 millimeter, maybe that's the look that you really like as well, but I think Having a lens like a 70 to 200 and shooting towards the 200 millimeter range, for me it just gives me so much control over the background and I can really pinpoint exactly what I have behind the model. In many cases, the background isn't that important, but what I don't want is something really distracting creeping up into the background like the fire hydrant. We've had Kirsten in the shade, which gives us a lot of flexibility. We're really not worried about head position or light fall off, but there's actually some really interesting light hitting right in front of her. So I think if we move her just a few steps forward, we can completely change the mood of the shots and work on something in more direct hard sunlight. Yeah, come forward just a little bit more. All right, I think, keep coming, I'll keep coming. I wanna get a lot of this sunlight on you. What I've done is I've eliminated a lot of the shadows on her face to get the shadows in a really nice position. And I can tell already before taking a photograph that when I expose for her shirt and her face, which are now in hard sunlight, the background's gonna go really dark, which is gonna produce a much more moody shot, but you can see just with three feet of movement, we're gonna be able to create completely different looking photographs. But now that I have her in direct sunlight, let's change the shutter from 250th of a second to 1 800th of a second, and let's see if that exposure is correct. Yeah, that's great. 
Keep that and then make eye contact right here, perfect. And as you can see now, we have really good light on her face, but the overall mood of the shot's completely different. I might actually like this shot better than the overall shaded shot that we just took. So here we are, we've just moved into the street. This is Chalmers Street in Charleston, which has these really cool cobblestones. The big problem though, is this street has a lot of character, but it also has a lot of cars. Like you saw in the previous shot, it also has this sky that's creeping in. And then we have parking signs and we have all kinds of distractions that you probably don't want in your photograph. So just to demonstrate this, let me go ahead and put the 35 millimeter lens back on here and show you all the distracting elements that we have right here in the street. Let's take a little test shot. And I think I'm gonna still shoot waist up, but you can see with this full body shot just how many things we have going on here. We have the sky creeping in, we have tons of little elements and lights and doorways and garages and stuff in the background, a bunch of different trees, but it's just really a busy, boring background. So let me take this lens off, let's go back to the 70 to 200 and let's see what kind of background we can get shooting at 70 millimeters. So this background is still a little distracting, but I think if I step back and shoot at a longer focal length, I can really clean up the background and make this all about the model. Now, as I'm taking these photos, the light here is dropping drastically because we are in the shade and I'm having to lower my shutter. Right now, I'm actually at an 80th of a second. And as you increase your focal length, you really want that shutter speed to be as fast as possible so that you don't get any blur. But what I'm able to do is turn on the vibration compensation and surprisingly, I can get really sharp images at 200 millimeters while shooting at an 80th of a second. And you know, just a few years ago before this technology was built into the lenses, this really wouldn't be possible at all. So I think I found some pretty interesting backgrounds here, especially since we have some light really far in the, in the distance there, but I'm not excited about the light on Kirsten. So what I think I wanna do is bring a strobe on location and light her separately so that I can have control over the great light on her, as well as the interesting light that's happening naturally in my background. So what I've done is I've had David bring in a Profoto B1. We have a huge uh, three by four softbox. And let me just show you what this shot looks like with natural light with the background that I like. Perfect. And so as you can see, the background's got a really nice exposure on it, but our subject is completely dark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn on this light and I'm gonna set this to power level five and let's take the same shot. And so as you can see from this photo, I'm not overly lighting it to where it looks crazy and, and kind of fake. It actually just looks like there's nice soft natural light falling on her to begin with, but I still have control over the background. So what I wanna do now is just really move a little bit and change the background dramatically and show you how many options you have by shooting at a longer telephoto length compared to what you would have if you were stuck with a wider 24 to 70 millimeter lens. Do a few. Do a little like surprise, like, ooh, you caught me. So as you can see from these photographs, there's so much variety in the background, and that's just simply from me moving a few feet left or right. Now, I don't always shoot every photograph at 200 millimeters, but I have to say it's very rare that I would shoot a portrait below 70 millimeters. So for me, the 70 to 200 2.8 lens is the go-to lens anytime I'm shooting any kind of portrait work or if I'm shooting in situations where I don't have complete control over the background. So if you've never shot portraits with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens, I would highly recommend you pick one up and try it. And I think you'll find that it gives you a lot more variety and a lot more options than if you were just shooting with say an 85 millimeter prime. If you want more information and videos about photography, head over to fstoppers.com. And if you want to check out our full length tutorials, head over to fstoppers.com store.